This is the CBS Radio Workshop. Well, folks, that just about winds up tonight's broadcast from the interplanetary rocket ship American Initiative. If Commander Potter's astral navigation continues to hold as true as it has so far, I will be broadcasting to you tomorrow night at this time from the planet Venus, which even now looms dead ahead of us, brighter and somewhat larger than our own moon. This is J. Alexander Caudill, speaking for Caledonia Oil, Shirley White Toothpaste, Inus Plinus Knock Beer, and Bar None Dog Food, and returning you now to the CBS studios on Earth. CBS Radio presents the CBS Radio Workshop, dedicated to man's imagination, the theater of the mind. Tonight, a pride of carrots, or Venus well served, by the noted American novelist Robert Nathan. And here to tell his story is Mr. Nathan himself. According to recent newspaper reports, scientists have been hearing strange and mysterious radio signals which they are convinced are broadcast from the planet Venus. And this may very well be the case. No one knows for certain that life exists on the other planets, but then no one can say for certain that it does not. And if it does, no one can say what form that life may take. One man's guess is as good as another's, and this is mine. This is the way Venus looks to me. Yeah, feels good to stretch your legs again. It sure does. You feel heavier or lighter? Hmm? Just normal. Then the gravity's about the same as Earth. Look there. Hmm? What? A daisy. You can take off your helmet. You sure? Sure. The presence of flora indicates the presence of air. Quite good air, as a matter of fact. Yeah, that rocket was getting a little musty. Well, this is a solemn moment, Commander. It is indeed, Caudill, the first man on Venus. Hand me the flag, will you? Oh, here you are. I hereby claim this planet for the United States of America. Through the courtesy of Caledonia Oil, Shirley White Toothpaste, Inus Kleinus Knocked Beer, and Barnum Dog. Oh, really, Caudle, must you? Well, it's in my contract. But we aren't on the air. Uh, well, a little rehearsal never hurt anyone. Anyway, we will be as soon as the tubes on this walkie-talkie warm up. One, two, three, four, testing. One, two, three, four, testing. There we are. CBS on Earth from Caudal on Venus. CBS on Earth from Caudal on Venus. How do you read me? That's funny. They're standing by around the clock on this frequency. Earth from Venus. Earth from Venus. Come in, Earth. Maybe freak atmospherics. Oh, fine. At a time like this to run into free... Potter. Yes? Do you see what I see over there in those bushes? Speaking of freaks... What is it? Well, it looks like a little horse. Yeah, but it's got wings and a sort of beak. And a tail like a kangaroo. And it's coming this way. Yeah, uh, where, where's the ray gun? I'll get it. All right, stand back, you filthy beast. Go away. Go away. I beg your pardon. Uh, you, you talk? Oh, naturally I talk. So do you. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? Certainly not. Oh, I'm sure I have. Oh, yes, on CBS. The outside of the inside of the news. You're J. Alexander Caudill. Do you mean to say you get our programs here on Venus? Venus? What do you mean, Venus? You're from Venus up there. Well, we call it the evening star at certain times of the year. But that's Earth. Nonsense. This is Earth. That's Venus. Silly, isn't it? But that's semantics for you. For instance, what would you call a group of carrots? Bunch. Bunch. Oh, good heavens, no. A pride of carrots. And that is, of course, on this side of the border. And a gaggle of onions. But if you were on the other side of the border, it would be an exaltation of onions and a deceit of carrots. Semantics, you see. It depends on your point of view. Uh, I see. A charm of griffins. You are a, uh, a griffin, I take it? Of course. Rather highly placed, as a matter of fact. Now, you notice my gold collar? 
I belong to the Secretary of the Interior. My name is Fido. And the Secretary? A very able carrot. Quite famous in his own right, but even more so for his wife's tassel. You've seen ordinary carrots, no doubt, with their green tops. But this is a most unusual tassel. Blue! Everyone is copying it. How does it happen that you, an animal, belong to a vegetable? Well, one has to eat. Vegetables? Oh, dear, no. Caraway seeds, truffles, marzipan. You look a little like marzipan yourself. You mind if I try... Uh, uh, hey, get it out. Stop biting me. Mm. Uh, delicious, but definitely not marzipan. What is it? Meat, you fool. You don't say. Meat. I never tasted meat before. You'll meet yourself. I am? Splendid. I'll just try me. Ooh, 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 that hurt. Of course it hurt. Now stop this nonsense and lead us to your master. Oh, yes, of course. That's why I'm here, isn't it? Follow me, fellow animals. They had not walked far through fields of charming wildflowers which sang like birds until they came to a shady bower of massive ferns. In the middle, reclining on a soft bed of lettuce leaves, were two carrots, much like any other carrot you may have encountered, excepting that one had a tassel of the most brilliant blue. The carrot with a standard green tassel rose as they approached. Welcome to our planet. Oh, thank you. In the name of the United States Navy, oh, later, I... Pre- Potter, later. Uh, your Majesty, uh, that is, Your Majesties. Uh, we are not Majesties. This is a republic. I am Edwin, Secretary of the Interior, and this is my wife, Edwina. And you're the famous news commentator, J. Alexander Cardell, and your Commander Potter. Well, precisely, madam. We've been watching your trip ever since your takeoff, until we lost you when you rounded Mars. (laughs) You're most welcome. Well, thank you, madam. You can perhaps conceive the feelings with which Commander Potter and I gaze upon this unfamiliar scene, the first mortals ever to... What's that? Oh, that's my daughter Alice. She knows all the latest songs. She says she's a cool cat, whatever that is. Hi, everybody. Company? Yes, dear. Come here and meet our visitors from outer space. Mr. Cardle, Commander Potter. Oh, I know all about the mother. Welcome to Caratania, gentlemen. I have already welcomed them, Alice. Oh, you don't understand the animal kingdom, Father. They'd much rather be welcomed by a young girl. Really, Alice? Where do you learn such things? At school, in zoology class. And where did you learn that song? I watch your television all the time. I want to be a great actress and sell cigarettes. You think I'm mad? No, that sounds like a very normal ambition to me. Oh, I like you, Potter. You interest me. Now, Alice, you simply must stop this prattle. We're all a little on edge, I'm afraid. This last day of waiting has been, well, after all, they could have landed in Onionopolis. But they didn't. The onions didn't get them. We got them. The onions? Yes. You see, our planet is divided into two countries, the Democratic Union of Keratania and the United Socialist Republics of Leeks and Onions. They are constantly threatening us with war. Well, why? They want us to be onions. But that's absurd. Of course it's absurd, especially when you realize that the only possible thing for everyone to be, if he wants to live a decent kind of life, is a carrot. Oh, naturally. But the onions won't see it our way, and they can't be trusted. I'm given to understand that they plan to use nematodes. It's race suicide, of course. Nematodes? What do you think, uh... Well, aren't they the tiny worms that all but ruined the citrus in California back in the 40s? I don't know much about citrus. Not exactly my line, you know. But here, the nematodes eat vegetables, a kind of virus, too small to see. We've tried to outlaw them, but the onions won't agree. Ah, well, we'll wipe each other out, I suppose, and the spiders can take over. It's sad to think about. Just spider webs everywhere. You know, it seems to me that they worked out a way to fumigate for nematodes out in California. See, if I could just get through to CBS on Earth, I could find out. You've had difficulties getting through? Well, at any rate, Earth isn't getting through to me. I'm sure we could get you through on a planet-to-planet hookup, particularly if you can find out anything about fumigating for nematodes. Hey, Commander, you hear that? We're going on the air after all. Uh, oh, splendid. You want me to make a prepared report, or shall we ad-lib? Well, you better type the report. You can ad-lib to your wife. Oh. Oh, you have a wife, Potter. Oh, yes, my dear. Every Navy man over a full lieutenant has a wife. A woman, I presume? Oh, yes, definitely. Has to be, you know. 
What is your wife like, Potter? Why, uh, she's uh, female, like uh, this. How odd. Bumpy, isn't she? Well, uh, You're not bumpy, Potter. No, I, I suppose not. Yes, well, uh, Your Excellency, uh, how soon do you think you can get us on the air? We should be able to have it set up in a few hours. Well, now, my regular spot is 8.30 to 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. You, uh, you think you can make it? We'll do our best. Oh, great. Hey, this calls for a celebration. It's too bad we haven't a bottle of champagne. Champagne? What's that? Well, a kind of bubbly wine. Uh, wine is made from grapes, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. I'm not sure I like the idea. Some of our best friends are grapes. Yes, well, well, don't worry, ma'am. We haven't any champagne anyway. We could break out our emergency rations. Now, that's a fine idea. Got a can opener? Sure, right here. You uh, care to join us, Your Excellency? Well, I don't know. May I see that can, please? Oh, sure. Here you are. U.S. Navy for emergency use only. Concentrated carrot juice. Oh, oh I think I'm going to God, seize these men. Put them under arrest. They're onions in disguise. <laughs> Our scene shifts now to Onionopolis, capital of the United Socialist Republic of Leeks and Onions, which controls half of the planet Venus. We are in the office of the Secretary General of the Party, a large, fat, white onion named Odor, as General Shallot enters. Death to carrots. Death to carrots. Well, General, the rumor has been verified by the underground. They landed near Caratopolis this morning. How did you permit this to happen, General? Unfortunately, our side of the planet was turned away from the direction they were traveling, so they landed on the backside, comrade. Excuses, excuses. We must have those spacemen, General. We must have their technical skill before the carrots get it, or we will be in the soup. Yes, comrade. It is insufferable that we who invented television, jet propulsion, the atomic bomb and the bicycle should be deprived of these two men who can tell us how to use them. It is an outrage, a national insult. Death to carrots. Uh, likewise. I want those two spacemen. It may be difficult, comrade. You uh, could call me excellency or little father. Everyone does. I am a descendant of the garlics. A garlic does not call anything excellency. Of course, of course. I was only joking. Here we are all comrades, all excellencies, little fathers. Except leeks, of course. Of course. Death to carriage. Death to carriage. By the way, General, what are you doing tonight? Imperialistic warmongers. Nothing. Capitalistic schwein. Come have dinner with me. Decadent bourgeois. Love to. And those spacemen must be bourgeois too, or they would have landed here. Possibly. Undoubtedly, but we will change their point of view once we have made them our guests, eh, comrade? That might not be so wise, comrade. Why not? Don't you want to learn how to set off guided missiles and ride bicycles? That is not the point, comrade. If we abduct these spacemen, we give Caratania a splendid opportunity to protest. And you must remember, comrade, protests are weapons too. The very best weapons. They cost nothing, and properly used, they create an odor, a real onion odor. Then you are opposed to kidnapping these spacemen. Definitely. Very well. I shall think about it. You could go, General. Thank you, comrade. Oh, by the way, I have news for you. You have just been promoted to field marshal. Thank you, comrade. Strength to onion. Strength to onion. See you at dinner. Death to carrots. I'll be there. Death to carrots, 8.30 sharp. Hello? Secret police? General Shallot has just left my office. Liquidate him. I'm hungry. I wonder when they feed their prisoners in this lousy jail. What difference does it make unless you have an appetite for bone meal, ammonium sulfate, and peat moss? Ugh, guess I'm not hungry after all. You shouldn't have shown him the label on the can, old man. That's what did it. Well, how could I tell? I thought it'd be chicken consomme. It usually is. Just when I had the greatest broadcast in history lined up. Now, now what? There's a lady to see you. Miss Alice. Shh, not so loud. 
Thank you, Sergeant. You can leave us now. Mind you, Miss Alice, this is contrary to your father's orders and against my better judgment. Oh, I know, Sergeant, but it's utterly divine of you. I shall be just outside. Scream if you need help. <laughs> you wouldn't hurt me, would you, Potter? I'm glad to have you aboard, ma'am. They say that you're dangerous vegetarians, that you eat carrots. Do you really? Well, you see, ma'am... I don't believe it. You're much too nice to eat poor little me. Thank you, ma'am. You know, you yourself are a vegetarian, Miss Alice. I am not. I'm a vegetable. It's not the same thing at all. Well, now, just answer me this. What will happen to you when you die? I'll be buried, of course, in the national compost heap. Uh Ah, from which the rich steaming soil is taken to nourish the young carrots, right? Of course. Which then must of necessity feed upon your decayed flesh. Why, of course. Why, how madly amusing. I really did eat my ancestors, didn't I? Oh, but I missed mother and father. I should hope so. But now what could be more satisfying to a girl's psyche than to have her father under her belt? Oh, have you been through analysis? Of course, haven't you? Yes. Oh, it's so nice to be able to talk the same language, isn't it? My analyst says the trouble with me is my mother has a blue top. Exactly. The active competition of an adult parent. It tends to make me aggressive. Kiss me, Potter. Huh? What? Kiss me. Good Lord, really, I... Are you afraid, Potter? It isn't even spring. I don't come into blossom till July. Uh, I know, but... but... Am I not beautiful? Am I not to be desired by the Navy? Oh, yes, yes, indeed, but... I could have your head, Potter, on a silver tray, like Salome. Uh, I know, but... I could set you free. Well, for heaven's sake, kiss her and get it over with. No, but... Oh, you smell Mm. so good. Like a grocery store. Oh, it's like April. Is this love, Potter? How can I feel this way about a carrot? I feel a strange heat. Not like the sun. Like a garden in the summer. I don't feel at all like a vegetable. I wouldn't have thought it possible. Look, how about getting us out of here? The time is up, folks. Oh. Oh, yes, I suppose it is. Oh, but don't worry, my darling. I'll be back. I'll be back quickly to set you free. You'll see. Well, there's the Navy for you. What have you fellas got that I haven't got? Blossoms in our hair. Ah. You uh, really like the girl, don't you? Yes. Well, now, of course, it's none of my business, but uh, what about Mrs. Potter? What about her? Well, she isn't going to like this pretty vegetable of yours. Caudle, could you be jealous of a stalk of celery? I am not married. No, of course, that does make a difference. Oh, I wish we were safe at home. There's something frightening about being in love with a carrot. You you smell anything, Commander? No. That's funny. For a moment, I I thought I smelled onions. Well, that's not very likely. I don't know. My eyes are watering. Mine, too. You know, I do smell onions. Gentlemen. Who are you? You are free, gentlemen. She did manage it, then. This way. Hurry, please. Where is she? I, I can't see very well. My eyes are full of tears. She's waiting for you, oh, sir. Just a minute, Commander. This isn't a carrot. It's an onion. Take them, comrades. So you see, gentlemen, we have no choice. The stakes were too high, being no less than war or peace. What are you talking about? Simply this, Commander Potter of the U.S. Navy. How do you make war? How do we do what? Make war. How do you destroy whole armies, cities, countries, with all their inhabitants, without, at the same time, annihilating yourselves? Unfortunately, there is no blight that will make compost out of carrots without doing the same for onions. I have to think of my people. Bless you, little father. Thank you, Spindles girl. You see, Commander, we are still in the drawing board stage. We need technicians. Don't look at me. My dear Commander, you must understand that the end justifies the means. When onions rule the world... Who would wish to be a carrot? I offer you an important place in history. The only place I want to be is next to a girl with a carrot top who smells like a garden after rain. Now, 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 let us not grow emotional. But perhaps you are closer to her than you think. 
Will you teach us to make war, Commander? You see, I am giving you another chance. Opportunity rarely knocks so often. I will not. Very well. Perhaps we will find a way to make you change your mind. There is a little experiment I am planning with a pot of boiling water. How would you like to see your, shall we say, girlfriend floating about with only a marrow bone for company? A quite excellent soup, petite marmite, I believe it is called. Sure, bluffing. Am I? We shall see. Spindle. Yes, little father. Take these gentlemen to the solarium and entertain them. Show them the vampire marigolds and the lizard-eating oleander, and they might be amused to watch the muerte vine digest its daily mouse. I warn you, Odor, the United States Navy will not take this lying down. Nor will CBS. This way, animals. Send in the other prisoner. Well, well, come in, young lady. Don't be bashful. I won't eat you. What do you want with me? Why did you bring me here? I suppose you wouldn't care to tell me the whereabouts of the Carrot Eight Army. No? Oh, you, so stupid, so impulsive, so desirable, but so uncooperative. By the way, your friend Commander Potter is here. <gasps> He, too, has proven uncooperative. We may have to press him a little. He wouldn't dare. He is being shown the muerte vines at this very moment. Not the meat eaters. Why not? The commander is meat, I believe. Oh, no, no, not that. Of course, I could be persuaded to change my mind. Oh, you have such lovely skin, my dear. So moist and tender. Please. You smell good, too, like a salad. Fragrant, but delicate. What freshness, what youth. I adore you. I loathe you. You do not realize your situation. One word from me, you are in the soup. I would a thousand times. Or what is perhaps more to the point, your friend Mr. Potter is left alone with the vampire marigolds. Oh, no, no. Oh, 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 that fetches you. You really care for him, don't you? More than life. All the better. It's much more exciting to make love to a woman already in love. That's a kind of seasoning, as it were. You, you nettle, you noise and weed. Splendid, splendid, so sweet and so hot, almost like a Spanish onion. Is this the way you make war on women and children? War? Who is making war? I'm making love. You are odious to me. Very well, we will try, Mr. Potter, in the muerte wise. No, 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 I, I can't stand it. You give up? You give in? Will he have a safe conduct? Back to my father? Yes, yes. Will there be one for me? Later. Write it out. But of course. For Mr. Potter, a pass. Also for Mr. Cordell. And now for Miss Alice. Yes, little father. Spindle, you will let the spaceman go. And you will see that this lady is returned to her own people. Later. It shall be done, little father. Now, divine creature, at last you are mine. No, no, stand back. Silly girl, drop that paper knife and receive the kiss of the little father. No, no! <laughs> it is thus a carrot kisses. Alice! Potter, Potter, thank heaven you're safe. You're crying. It's nothing, nothing. It's only onion juice. Here are your passes. Go quickly, both of you. And you? I must wait for a little while. If I go with you now, they'll be suspicious. No. If we have to die, then we'll die together. Oh, no, no, my dear Potter. That wouldn't help my country, or this little world, or even me. I've become very sensible, Potter, very realistic. Don't you see? It doesn't matter about me. But you, you, Potter, you're the hope of the future. Look, I'll try to catch up to you at the frontier. If I don't come, be kind to Carrots, Potter, for my sake. Go now, and God bless you. Come on, Potter, we're on the air in an hour. Hurry, hurry, they're coming back. I'm staying with you. No, no, my dearest, Potter, go. Go, the world needs you. The universe needs you. Come on, Potter. Farewell, then, my dearest Alice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of Earth and other species throughout the planetary system, this is J. Alexander Caudill, 
bringing you the very first broadcast from Venus. Through the courtesy of Caledonia Oil, Shirley White Toothpaste, Ines Kleinus Knock Beer, and Bar None Dog Food. Oh, uh, ex excuse me a moment, ladies and gentlemen. There, uh, there's some confusion here in the studio. We're, we've just received a bulletin. What's that? Oh, no. Alice? In the soup? And I'll need a pound of peas. Pound of peas. And a cauliflower. A cauliflower. You must be very happy to have your husband back again, Mrs. Potter. And all those write-ups in the papers, my goodness. Did he really get to Venus like they said? I missed the broadcast. Yes, he did. Uh, oh, a bottle of ketchup. A bottle of ketchup. Mm -hmm. You know, he looks a little thin in his pictures. I guess maybe they didn't have much to eat up there. Mm, I guess not. What was it like? Did he tell you? He hasn't said much. Uh, four dozen onions. Four dozen? That's right. He, he eats them all the time. Raw. Raw? <laughs> they say onions are good for colds. I know. There's lots of things like that, like carrots make your hair curly. Oh, he won't touch carrots. He won't. Not even cooked. Not even cooked. I served a petite marmite the other night, and he got up and left the table. No. Now, isn't that something? Uh, one sack of uh, peat moss. What's that for? He, he says he's got blossoms in his hair. Hmm. Uh, that'll be 3.47, Mrs. Potter. I'll have someone take them out to the car for you. Oh, thank you. Goodbye now. Blossoms in his hair? In February? The CBS Radio Workshop, produced in Hollywood by William N. Robeson, has presented A Pride of Carrots, or Venus Well Served, by Robert Mason, with the author as narrator. A Pride of Carrots was adapted for the workshop by Mr. Robeson, who also directed the production. Heard in the cast were Helene Burke, June Foray, Tracy Roberts, Dawes Butler, Ted Bliss, Richard Hale, Alan Reed, Sam Pierce, and Bill Thompson. The original score was composed and conducted by Jerry Goldsmith. Next week, from New York, the workshop will examine that so often discussed and little understood subject, the Oedipus Complex, with illustrations from Sophocles, who first dramatized it, to Eugene O'Neill, who is by no means the last to probe its dramatic depths. For Mozart's Concerto for Piano and Orchestra in A minor, played by Robert Casadesus, and for Elizabeth Schwarzkopf's moving interpretations of songs by Richard Strauss, join us on Sunday, when on most of these same stations, world music festivals will be on the air, with highlights from the famous Salzburg Festival. Stay tuned for five minutes of CBS News, to be followed over most of these same stations by My Son Jeep. America listens most to the CBS Radio Network.